City strife, horses, chicks, and dogs, they are my neighbors. I cook and sun spin, and move the horses in to the barn, and time to move them out again. Red barns, green pastures, beautiful my houses. The view I see each day when I arise. This light it pleases me. It is plain to see I'm living my bucolic life. Well, welcome to the next project. And I have absolutely no idea how long this one's going to take me. I was reading my uh, Bishop Sewing Method book last night and I got onto the coat section. And now I'm in the mood to make a coat. It's kind of like when you watch a baking show, then you're in the mood to bake. It's that kind of thing. And I am going to make a pattern that I have had for a very long time. And I figure I better make it now before it leaves the current catalog. So it's going to be this one. It's a simplicity pattern. And I'm going to be making the longer version. It's basically a princess seamed coat with this really cool Come on, focus. It's with this really cool thing that's like a hood, but if you pull it down, it's like a cape. You know, I like that. I'm going to be doing the longer version. It has pockets set in right here, so they're not on the sides. They're in that princess seam gore in the front. I think it's going to be nice. Now, I am going to be doing full-blown interlining, underlining, lining everything. And I am going to be making it out of green velveteen. So it's a cotton velveteen. It's a cotton home deck velveteen. So it's fairly thick, okay? But right now downstairs, what I have in my really heavy, it's cold, I actually need something to keep me insulated out there. It's kind of utilitarian and I want something a little more glamorous and my blue coat is too too much for that so I figure I'm going to make this up but because I'm going to be doing so many steps and so many layers I am going to be making a mock-up out of vintage sheet you know so that's going to be my first step plus I still need to order the separating zipper for this so let's go ahead and start strategizing this coat because it's going to be quite a project. Okay, so I have not cut anything out, just pulled this out for the first time. And I can see a couple things I want to make sure I have enough room for because this is a coat. It's going to be a fairly substantial thick coat. I want to make sure I have enough ease to be able to move comfortably. And also this does look fairly form fitting. I want to make sure my bottom side has plenty of room, but also up here, my body shape is uh, more towards hourglass. So my waist usually isn't the problem. It's usually up here and down here. And so when I'm cutting out my pattern pieces, and especially when I'm doing my mock-up, I'm going to be looking for that ease. So when I make up my mock-up, um, I'm going to want it to actually fit fairly loose, but I'm going to want um, to make sure that I don't make it so big that the shoulders are oversized. Now, the shoulders will be hidden by a cape, so is that a big deal? I don't know. Let me go ahead and get started um, cutting out the pattern pieces here and seeing how much ease is actually built in because they tell you on the envelope how much is built into the bust, but they don't tell you about the waist and the hip. So I'm hoping I can get that information from here. Um, the other thing is I've been debating on if I pre-wash this or not. Once I have this whole coat made up, the odds are I will not be throwing it into the washing machine. Okay, the odds are if it needs to be cleaned, I'll have it either professionally cleaned or I'll wash it by hand and hang it up to dry. Um, but it is a little bit stiff. And sometimes home deck fabrics have a coating on it 
that you know can get a little uncomfortable or something later on. So I am going to go ahead and pre-wash this on its own just to try to get some of that out of it so it's more comfortable to work with and hopefully not quite so stiff. I have just made the executive decision that I'm going to be cutting everything out one size larger than I standardly wear. I usually wear a 16 very comfortably. I'm cutting everything out of an 18. It's easier to make things smaller than to make them bigger again is my, you know, my rule of thumb for this project, I think. So I'm just going to go ahead, cut everything out of size 18, and then when I make my mock-up, if I can see that I can make things smaller in other places, I will. But that's my plan right now. I'm always so amused by the uh, vintage telephone and 1980s version computer that's printed on the pattern pieces. I love that. I wonder if if our younger folk would even know how to use one of those. But, all right, so I got it cut out. Now the pieces that I'm going to use to make my mock-up are just the ones necessary for getting proper fit, which is going to be the sleeve and the main bodice pieces. This one um, is for the lining. The front bodice piece is sized differently for the main part and for the lining, so not that. So it's just going to be these four and the sleeve that I'm going to be cutting out. Alrighty, so I just took a quick look through the instructions. Very quick. Did not even read anything. Just glancing at pictures here. <laughs> and I can tell that I'm probably going to be assembling slightly different because I am um, underlining and things like that. But I had an idea. And my idea came because I really like this sheet. It is just so darn cheerful. And I have decided I'm going to use this to line my coat. So this mock-up is going to do two things. It's going to size or verify that I have the right size and it's going to work as my lining just because it's fun. Now the only difference is the front piece here. This is the one that they want you to use for the lining. This is the one that they want you to use your actual fabric. I've cut it out of this piece because I need to be able to make sure it fits by doing these folds here. Once I have it all done, my plan is that then I can just trim this because the lining piece is basically the same as this. It's just shortened to this point, this um, center front line. If I put it right there, you can see that a little bit better. So I think that with that could be fun. So the first thing I need to do is start marking up my front piece here. All right, so I'm going to be marking this with my red heat erasable pen, punching my holes with my little scrap of leather and leather hole punch. So I can use that to punch my hole through and come in here and mark with my red. And my notches, I am just going to clip not too deep, you know, a fat eighth of an inch thick there. I have a circle, Move this up here. I have a circle right here that's going to help me with sleeve placement and a notch up here. And it looks like I did not cut that very carefully. So while I'm here, I'm going to trim this. So once I am not actually going to mark these circles here, that's for pocket placement. I'm not doing a pocket in my lining at this point. Okay, so what I am going to do to mark these lines here, because they are important, is I'm just going to pull my pattern down a little bit here, mark the tops of all of these, and do the same thing at the bottom, raise it up, and just mark the bottom edge of those. So now I'm just going to draw them. So if I measure on the pattern here, just to verify, the first line looks like was one and three eighths inch from the edge. So I am, I have my little starter point there just to make sure I am about right. I'm going to line up my ruler and just draw this line all the way down. Okay. You don't need to watch me do the whole thing, but I'll do the same thing with each one. Just measure the distance. The next one is three quarter inch beyond this. And there's my little starter to make sure that I am accurate. 
place this here and draw that one. So when I'm all done on both sides of this front piece, I'm going to have three lines drawn on both the right and the left side. So, <clears throat> excuse me, so when I'm done, I have it marked up here with my three lines. I've got a dot over here for sleeve placement, one right here at that 5 8 inch in. And if I wanted to, and I think I will, I can come back and mark what these lines are. So this one that's closest to the edge is going to be the stitch line for the zipper. Stitch for zip. This will come off, so I will erase it all in a little while. The middle line is the fold line, so I'm just going to write that fold. And this other one here is the center front. So I'm just going to put a big CF on there. So now I know what everything is. And so this is my center front piece. Now I need to get my side front piece. It looks like the only dots on the side front piece are these two, which is for a pocket placement, which I am skipping right now. So I am just going to clip all of my notches and then work on joining my side front to my center front. So there is a right side and a wrong side. My wrong side is a little more pale, so I know which goes with which. So this is going to be the side that goes with this front. So we have a couple notches and the notches on princess seams are usually just above and just below the curviest part of the seam. So I'm going to want to match those up first. Now this is not a very extreme princess seam. It's not like a super curve, so it shouldn't be very difficult, but still there's my bottom notch right here and this one right here. So I'll put those two together. Whatever I do for this side, of course, I will do for the other side also. So that's sticking out. We'll deal with that in just a second. Before I get to it, I'm going to go ahead and pin it all the way up to the top, matching this nicely shaped corner up here. Now, look at that. When I pin this corner where it's supposed to be, I actually have a little bit of an ease issue right there too, which is very interesting to me. Um, not going to worry about that right now. I'm just going to go ahead and pin this bottom up. Sometimes there's issues on patterns. Sometimes it's just the way it's made so that there's more fullness on one side than the other. So I try not to get too freaked out one way or the other. You can see this fits together very well underneath the princess seam, so I'm just going to go ahead and pin this together. Okay, so now dealing with this very full part here. What I'm doing is I've got the shorter piece on top, the big curvier one on the bottom. All right, and what I'm going to do is just kind of set them together. I've got my fingers in between it, so. And then bending it so that the shorter side is curving a bit. Now on the instructions, they do not show to clip either side of this. So I am not going to, but I can tell you when you do bend it and guide it this way, um, at that point, 5 8 inch in, which is where you're going to be sewing, it does line up and it does match up. It's just out here at the edge. It does not but right along this part where the 5 8 stitching line is going to be, it will be flat. So I'm just going to go ahead and pin this. And with that part up above the notch where it seemed to not line up terribly well right there either, which is odd to me, if I do bend it the same way, it matches up also. All right. So I'm just going to get it halfway there, put a pin in the middle, and I should be able to go ahead and sew it there. Okay, so I know that the pattern does not call for clipping the seam allowance. I know that, but I really want to because it's going to make it so much easier to sew this seam without all of this stuff here, okay? So usually, 
and on my main fabric I will, this lining I won't, on a princess seam I do a row of stay stitching at the stitch line and that reinforces it to make sure that I'm not going to clip into anything that I'm not supposed to. But I am just going to make a few clips just a little over a quarter inch long and I think that that should, putting them in like an inch or and a half or so apart, that should make this side be able to flex enough that I can sew it well. <clears throat> so I am sewing with the center front on top and the side seam on the bottom. Okay, I'm coming up to the notch um, and that's where it's gonna start to curve more. So because I have made my little clips here on my front piece, I'm able to flex it a little bit more, which is gonna help things lie better as I make this curve. Okay, I'm gonna pull that one out. And because it has my clips, I can kind of form it up here like so. That just makes a lot more sense to me. It makes it so that it lies better. Um, otherwise, there's just too much of a chance for things to not be perfect, you know? And why make your life more difficult than it already needs to be sometimes? All right, so I'm just gonna take this all the way up to the edge here. And that is it. Now just really quickly at my ironing board, the seam that we just did gets pressed towards the center front. It does not get pressed open. It goes towards the center front, both sides of it. So I'm gonna do that for both of these. All right, so I've got it over there on my dress form. It's about as long as my dress form is, which is a good length for a coat for me. Got my center fronts matched up. So now I'm gonna get my back and side back pieces and put those together. Okay, so this is my center back piece. No dots on this one, just uh, several notches. So I have clipped those already. I'm gonna take this paper off and get the side back over here. All right, on the side back, there is a circle over here for sleeve placement. Everything else is just clipping notches. So I'm gonna go ahead and clip that and remove the paper. Okay, so the princess seam on the center back is not as curvy as the one on the front. So um, shouldn't hopefully have to worry about that. I'm gonna go ahead and pin them together, matching up here at the top. I have a double notch somewhere, looks like right here that I can match up. And just pin it all the way down. Go to my sewing machine, stitch it at a 5 8 inch seam allowance in the back seam allowances are pressed open. So I'm gonna do that for both sides of my back piece. So over here at my ironing board, I'm pressing these princess seams open. And I just wanted to show you, it is so much easier to do this. If you have a curved surface, this is you know, my pressing ham that I made in a very old video on my playlist somewhere. Um, but just having a curved surface to be able to open things up and press on makes it a lot, lot easier. So I'm just gonna do that, open those up, press them open all the way down the back. Okay, so now I'm just going to match up and sew up together my shoulder seams and my side seams. But I wanted to show you, let me move these fronts out of the way, see if you can get an idea. This is a whole lot more flared down here at the bottom than I it looked like in the picture. I'm really happy about that because sometimes it's hard to judge on princess seams when you're looking at several different pieces. And so I think it's going to be just fine. Now, yes, I did cut out a size larger than I usually wear which is fine, it is a coat. Uh, once I have everything together, then I'll see you know, how it all lines up, but I don't think I'm gonna be too tight with what I cut out. If anything, I might be taking something in. So that's a good thing, and I am loving this sheet. So let me go ahead, put my sides together, my shoulders together, sew those up, and um, I am not, I'll press open the shoulder seams, but I'm gonna leave the side seams 
as stitched because if I'm going to make any adjustments that's where it's going to be. All right so I want to show you what I've done. I have it obviously pinned onto my dress form. Remember I marked this line CF for center front. So I have it the bottom is the same as the top one folded at this fold line and I have my center front pinned to the center front of my dress form both sides of them so all the way down it is closed up and matching at that center front level okay so when I stand back I can see all right there's a lot of ease down here there is plenty for my rounder hips and bottom side and up here I can see that there is enough ease built into this. Now I could probably take it in a size back down to the 16 and make it work but at this point I'm kind of liking all this because I'm going to have a layer of that thick cotton uh, velveteen. I'm going to have the lining and I'm going to have a middle underlining layer for extra warmth and so I kind of want the extra space. So I'm going to go with this. One thing I was concerned about is if the shoulders were going to be too far. Once the seam is put in, it's going to be, you know, a seam allowance in, and I think that that's going to be okay. So that's good. Let me go ahead and get the sleeves put together now. So for the sleeve, um, notches everywhere. There's two notches on each side. On one side of it, the back portion of it, the two notches are farther apart than they are over here. Okay, this needs to get eased together and they do that so that you have an easier way to bend your elbow back here. So make sure um, I clip my notches there. And then there are three dots for sleeve placement. One on the top to go with the shoulders and one on each side that's going to match up with the dots we put on the um, bodice pieces there. Up here along the top between these two I'm going to run two rows of gathering stitches. You know one at a half inch seam allowance, one at three eighths to a quarter inch seam allowance, and the same right here. There shouldn't be that much. Let's see here if I match it up. It's only about a half an inch. I don't even think I need to run ease stitches for that. I think I can let the feed dogs ease, ease that in without stitches there. So. Okay, so on my sleeves I've got my two rows gathering stitches in and I wanted to show you what I mean by uh, letting the feed dogs ease this in because I haven't showed this in a little while. So basically I've pinned it together from this notch up and pinned it together from this notch down. Now it, the sleeve kind of angles where that hem line is going to be so pay attention to that. But I'm going to be putting it with the side that has the extra ease in it down and the other side up. So I am looking at the flatter side here. All right so I'm just using a standard stitch length. I'm just you know back stitching it to lock it in up here and I'm going to sew straight to my first notch. Okay so I'm at my first notch and remember I've got all of this extra down here. The main thing I want to make sure is that the two edges stay on top of each other that one doesn't stick out farther than the other. Down here where this pin is I'm going to hold it pretty tight and what that's going to do is keep the top nice and tight while the bottom is loose and the feed dogs are going to move and move and move and work all that extra in. So all I need to work, worry about paying attention is holding this nice and tight and keeping these two edges level. Okay, so I got up to my other notch here and I'm just going to go ahead and take it to the end and then I'll show you what it looks like on the back where it eased all of that in. Now down here it angles back out so keep an eye on that. Okay. 
also on the back side of this where I was working everything in, you can see where it's a little bit, well, ruffle is not the word. There's just a lot of extra ease worked in there, okay? But on the front, it's nice and flat. And that way, doing it that way, you don't need to put extra gathering stitches or any other method to back there. You can just kind of work it on your machine as you go. So I'm gonna go ahead um, to my ironing board, put a sleeve roll inside. Whoops, let me get over here. Put a sleeve roll inside of my sleeves and press this seam allowance open. Good morning, welcome to the next day. And I just wanted to show you what I deal with all the time. I love her, but really, Midna. So here are my sleeves. And I had a few thoughts and I wanna go over them with you. Okay, so I just pulled the sleeve on and um, I can see I have room in here and it's not a whole lot though, all right? So, but I think it might be okay. What I might do though is add, just because it's winter time, if you're wearing sweaters or things underneath uh, a coat, you really want extra ease, extra, extra, you know, and I have massive arms. So I am going to change my sleeve pattern to add um, an extra inch to it, just to be safe. So I'm not gonna put those on right now. I will do that in a little bit. But I wanted to talk strategy for a minute here. And I'm going to be doing an interlining layer on my coat, which is not in the pattern. The pattern calls for the outer fabric and the lining, okay? And so to explain, because there's, there's so many terms, there's underlining and interlining and interfacing. And the easiest way for me to understand it is to, it's geeky, but look at the word, inter. It's like intern, it means to bury, okay? When something is buried, you're not gonna see it, but it's attached to the dirt on top of it, right? So if it's an interfacing, it's buried underneath, you're not gonna see it and it's attached to the facing. If it's an interlining, it's buried underneath the lining, attached to the lining, and you're not gonna see it. Under is different. Under just means below. So if something is underlined, you can see it if it's not lined. So if something is underlined, you know, it's um, a different process altogether where you just put a layer of fabric against the wrong side of your fashion fabric and treat them as one. And in that way, it adds support and things like that, but that underlining layer will be seen. If it's inter, it's never gonna be seen, or it shouldn't be. The theory behind it is it shouldn't be. So I am going to interline, and let me go get um, the fabric that I'm going to use. So with interlining, you basically create an entire separate piece that is then attached to your lining. And then that piece with the lining is then treated as one, okay? This is what I'm gonna be using as my interlining. I was playing with this on my machine and I will go into detail on how I did this. But what I'm gonna interline with is basically a quilted layer. Um, this side is just, well, I have some of this stuff and I'll show you. It's, it's fleece, it's got like a poly broadcloth on this side and it has a um, cotton flannel on that side and just random quilting I did just to hold it together, okay? So I, what I need to do is cut out of the size pieces that I am going to be using for my lining which are the exact same as for the finished coat except for that front piece. That front piece is, is a little narrower. But I may need to cut out one of each of those bodice pieces, okay? Now the sleeve, I am not going to interline the sleeve. All right, I'm gonna interline the whole front part here. Obviously not the hood and not the sleeves. I will just use plain lining on the sleeves just because I don't need extra bulk there and it's right here that I wanna keep all my extra warmth. All right, so with that said, and because I did have to order a zipper for my coat, and one of the very first steps that it calls for on the pattern is to put the zipper in, I'm gonna actually focus today on getting my interlining 
and the lining all situated and everything so that when my zipper gets here, I can just blast through the regular part of the coat. So let me show you how I'm making these. So one of the main things I wanna point out is because this is gonna be buried, it doesn't really matter what color it is. My outer fabric is thick enough, nothing is gonna show through. If your outer fabric was you know, thin, somewhat see-through, yeah, you might wanna pay attention. Mine is not, so. What I have here is at one point I bought an entire roll of this stuff off of Facebook Marketplace and I use it for all kinds of stuff. It's just, you know, this, where it's like a poly cotton broadcloth on the outside and a little bit of a batting on there. It's not really thick, it's just a pretty thin batting. So I am going to do my side back piece. And the first thing I'm gonna do is cut off a piece. I only work with a piece of fabric that is large enough to handle one piece at a time because more than that, it gets really cumbersome. Okay, so the edge of my fabric is right here. And I wanna give myself at least an inch on all sides, maybe even an inch and a half, you know? So if I was to measure an inch and a half beyond up here and I have a gap down here. You can see I have my ruler backwards, which is gonna give me about 13 inches. Okay, that's gonna be about 13 inches right here. So that's what I'm gonna cut a strip. Actually, I'm gonna cut two strips because I'll have two of them to make that are 13 inches wide. So I just come across here and mark it off and I'm gonna follow my marks, come across here and cut two strips 13 inches wide. Now this is just one option here. You can use fleece, you can use an old blanket, um, you can use some of the specially designed fabrics for thermal insulation, like Thinsulate or something like that. I just wanna use up what I have on hand and uh, you know, it works for me, but you can be creative and do whatever you want. Find something that's a weight that will work well for you. All right, so I have a bulk roll of just generic black flannel here. It's very utilitarian. And so I am going to cut a strip of my flannel a little bit wider. I might go 14 inches on this just because I'm gonna be tearing it. Plus, um, if something's gonna contract or scooch up or buckle or something. It's gonna be the flannel side, not the corset side. So I'm gonna go ahead and rip out uh, two 14 inch wide pieces of flannel. All right, so now I can just layer my piece of flannel up here. And um, now the way that I'm getting this on, this is the traditional way, okay? Is this the only way? Oh, no. There are, you know, ready-made coats and jackets that have an interlining lining layer that buckle in or snap in or button in or whatever and come out and everything. I'm putting mine permanently in. It's just what I want. Um, but yeah, you can find other ways, other methods and everything. This is my, my traditional way and everything, but when you're making a coat, figure out what's gonna work for you. If you're doing an all season one, where you're going to need it for somewhat cold weather and crazy cold weather, you might want to make a removable layer, you know, so that when it's cold enough for a light coat, you can wear it. But when it's a blizzard, you can also wear it. But anyway, all that being said, what I'm going to do is go ahead and pin, put straight pins in here and pin it together. All right, so now I'm going to get my piece, place it on here, make sure all my linings are starting relatively close to the edge there. And I'm just going to place it on here so I know I have enough space to cover it, but not too much. And I'm going to trim off this excess up here a couple inches above because I just don't feel like I should have to quilt a part of it that I'm never going to use. And the smaller the piece is, the easier it is to maneuver. So I'm going to be quilting on my treadle. Let me take you over there and show you how it works. All right, so this is the machine that I use to quilt on. She is a old Model 66 Red Eye Singer. And um, 
She's not really modified in any way. The only difference for quilting is I have a quilting foot on her. And they do make quilting feet in all different types. I'll pull it off so I can show you what I have. It's one of the, it looks like this, okay? It's also called a darning foot. Um, this little part goes over the screw and every time the bar goes up, it slightly lifts this up off so you can move the fabric. So they have, I have several different kinds of quilting feet because when I was trying to uh, figure out what would work better, it's a, a lot of trial and error, you know, a lot of trying different things, but thankfully quilting feet are not that expensive in general general. I'm also using these gloves. Um, you don't have to, but they really help uh, make it easier to move the fabric around. They're quilting gloves. I don't even remember where I got them, but they have little rubber grippies. I think gardening gloves with rubber grippies would work well too. So I put those on. Now the way I do it when I get started is for this machine, um, this machine, the feed dogs will not drop, so they're always going to be up, but I can work around that. I just change the stitch length to zero, so they're not going back and forwards, they're just going up and down, okay? So I'm going to start in the middle of one side here, and I just do, on things like this, a totally random pattern. It's just like doodling, um, because it's not going to be seen anyway. I just want it quilted enough, it's going to hold the two pieces together. So if you're new to this and you want to just practice, this is a great thing because it's a useful thing you can use, but no one's ever going to see it if you don't like your design. So I put my needle down, bring it back up, and then raise my presser foot so I can tug this thread and it'll pull the bobbin thread up. And I'm going to catch that and bring it out. And then set the presser foot back down again. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. I got my threads here and the first couple stitches you you move it with your hand. That's the whole point is you're going to be uh, changing the movement with your hand. I'm going to stop with the needle down, raise up my presser foot, pull these two threads out and clip them off so they will not be in my way put my presser foot back down and I am ready to go. But I do do like about an inch of stitches just to lock it in. And I have to make sure my wheel's going the right way. And then I just start doodling. I do loops, I do points. I'm just doing like a serpentine kind of thing here. The faster you move your hands, the longer your stitches will be, okay? When I get near a pin, just pull that out and keep going. So you can see the faster I go, the longer my stitches are. So just play with it. It's kind of fun, kind of therapeutic. I like quilting on a treadle. It's more like hand drawing that way. I don't know. But anyway, at this point, I'm not really thinking about where my pattern piece is going to be set. I'm just kind of trying to fill the entire thing in with stitching, all right? Once I have this all stitched, then I'm going to cut my pattern piece out. Okay, so I think you kind of get the idea there. This. This is what it's looking like so far. And I'm going to go ahead and just finish filling in this whole piece. All right, so back over here at my table, I just have a single layer of this down. And I'm going to place my pattern piece on top and just lightly pin it to the very top layer of my quilted set here. Um, just to hold the pattern on. I don't need to go through the entire thing because that has a tendency to kind of buckle the... Uh, the piece. I just want to hold it on and then I'm going to cut out my single layer of my interlining. And interlining is traditionally for warmth, okay? Un underlining a fabric is more for structure, 
um, for making it not so opaque. But interlining, doing this on the lining, is for warmth usually. So now I have it pinned. I can just come back in here and trim around my lining piece. All right, so I have this one cut out. Right here, I'm gonna place them so that I have two opposite pieces. And I'm not gonna pin this one, it's fabric against fabric, so it'll hold well enough and just go ahead and trim again around that piece. So all of the pieces are the same method except for the back because the back is just a single piece cut on the fold. So when I'm going to measure it, I, you know, again, give myself an inch and a half or so over here. And I measure up to that fold line. Again, putting my ruler the right way, which is about 11 inches. So I'm going to double that because I'm going to need to uh, cut this out once I have all this quilted cut it out as a single piece so I'm going to cut this strip 22 inches wide again put my flannel on it quilt it cut it out as a single piece all right so I have this big piece all done here just squiggles everywhere and I need to cut out my back piece so what I'm going to do is just lightly at the top and bottom in my corners pin it to the top layer of my quilting just to hold it in place and then um, I'm going to mark at the fold line with chalk straight up here and straight down below and that way I'll know where to uh, line my piece up when I'm done so first thing is just trim out this side up to that point that I drew my chalk line at okay just to right there and do the same thing at the bottom just up to that chalk point okay so I went ahead and clipped down at that chalk mark just so that it's a little more obvious to the camera where that is and then I can flip my piece over line this up up here I'm just going to put one little pin there to keep it from shifting on me and down here at the bottom, that I know you cannot see right now, I'm also lining up with the chalk mark. Again, put a couple very light pins on the side and I can go ahead and cut this out and then I will have my one big back piece and I'm done with this part of the project. Okay, so before I go any further, I'm going to adjust my sleeve, my sleeve pattern. And I will be cutting a new lining piece for it. Um, I have enough fabric from that lovely sheet to be able to do that. So what I want is I want to leave the sleeve cap size the same because that's going to work for me. Down here I want to leave this the same. That's going to work for me. It's just up here that I need to give myself more space. So I'm going to do this the standard way of this dot up here at the very top. That should be where the shoulder seam is. And that's where I'm going to divide it. So I have my grain line here. And you can maybe see I have a grid on my table behind it. And I'm going to line that up on the grid so I know it's going the right way here. Then I'm going to put my big old ruler also on here and I want to um, it looks like my dot is about an eighth of an inch or so below this line here on my grid so I'm just gonna put it there get my pen and just draw that line all the way up did you mark barely you did mark but not so well all right then this does not have a bullseye but we can guess right below where the sleeve joins, that's gonna be the biggest part of the, the girth around my arm here, okay? So what I'm gonna do is draw a line this way, straight across there, making sure the line that I just drew, going here, now I switch this a bit, is lining up with one of the lines on here, so I have an exact 90 degree angle, okay? I'm go ahead and draw that line on. So I have 
a big pencil looking cross on here. Okay, so here's this line and here is this line. I think you can see that a lot better. So what I'm gonna do is cut it from the bottom all the way up to that little circle at the very top. I'm not gonna cut the other side of that circle. Right to there. So it's still attached up here at the very top, okay? And then on the sides, I'm gonna cut up to about 5 8 inch in and still leave it attached on the outside edge. Two right about there. And on this side. Cutting it to right about there. Okay. Now I need to get some uh, paper that I can use to fill in the blanks here. So let me go get a strip of tracing paper from my scrap bin. So I think that I am actually going to want to spread out that sleeve at the widest part. If I, it, let me see how wide I can make it without it looking awkward or getting out of proportion. Two inches would be fabulous. Then I know I could put a arm with a fat sweater on under there. Um, but we will just see. So I've got my little scrap tissue paper. Just going to kind of set it underneath here. Just to keep it all nice and straight, I am actually going to put a little piece of tape on my little tissue paper. I'm sticking down here and tape it to my table at the bottom and the top just to keep it nice and flat and straight there. It's a little too stretched. Okay, so now this little piece here isn't going to go anywhere. That's going to make my life easier. And I want to make sure that my bottom edges are going to end up together. All right, so I'm actually going to take a little piece of tape, maybe about a quarter inch wide strip, and just tape those together down here at the very bottom. Okay so I know that they'll stay closed. Now, <clears throat> up here, these are gonna wanna overlap a bit. Um, I'm just gonna lift my top ones and pull the whole thing out a bit. So my top are gonna go on top. And pulling it out, see what this looks like, okay? Up here, at this widest point, well, that is a little over two inches. And, it actually looks kind of doable. That does look doable. But I think it's a little much. I'm gonna actually push it in just a bit and I am just gauging it by how out of whack the sleeve cap looks. That's all I'm doing. So I think that this looks a little bit better. And what this is adding up here is an inch and a half. I think that'll be fine. So now I'm just gonna tape these two not the, not the tops, but these two side pieces to my tissue down here, okay? Let me put another tapes down here about halfway to hold it. All right, now I just need to get this top piece to lay nice and flat. Make sure that the edges are behaving where they are. And I want it to be as high as I can get it without anything bending, okay? And at this point, it feels natural. Once I get a little bit above this, uh, I don't know if you can see the corners start to tweak in, but if I lower it, that's where it goes. So you'll know where it falls naturally where the best place is gonna be. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a piece of tape here and over here. Okay, and then up here at the top, I will also tape it down. So, um, I can add more tape if I want to. I'm gonna actually put a couple pieces down these sides just to make sure that they wanna stay nicely where they should be. And now I have a new sleeve piece. So I will be cutting out um, one of these in my lining 
And I've decided I am also going to cut out one of these in the flannel, but not out of the quilted because I want it to have a little bit extra warmth and I think just that extra layer of flannel will do it, but I don't want it to be uh, thick and stiff which I think the quilting would do, which is fine in the bodice, but not in the sleeve. So let me go ahead and cut this piece out. I'm gonna cut two of these out of my floral sheet lining and two of these out of my black flannel. While I have this piece on my table, I have my uh, flannel two pieces cut out, my lining two pieces cut out. I'm gonna go ahead and do the interline, the underlining process, sorry, with the sleeves. Um, while it's nice and flat, it's easier. So before I do anything, I'm going to clip my notches so I can keep track of everything. The center dot, I'm actually gonna clip that also. Clip this gal, oh, awkward. Clip this over here. Remember there's the sides that we need to do a little bit of easing on, so I'm gonna Clip where those two notches are. Over here, these little dots I'm actually ignoring for right now. Once I have all the underlining done, I will go back and mark those dots. So now I can pull off my paper and I will match up one piece of lining to one piece of underlining flannel. So I've just removed my paper. I'm going to flip this piece over this way. So now I have two opposite pieces face up. When you're dealing with a fabric that looks exactly the same on both sides, sometimes it's easier to start with that one as a base uh, because it's less likely to get things messed up. So the one that is up, I have one, two notches here. Two notches on the inside means that's the back part. So I want to make sure I line up the correct corresponding lining piece and pin it on. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this, line up the edges as carefully as I can and pin it all the way around. All right, so I have it <clears throat> pinned together here and I am just gonna hand baste around the edges, <clears throat> excuse me, hand baste around the edges, you know, nice big old stitches. Find my pin cushion here. Um, Nothing really tight, just maybe, my stitches are probably getting close to half an inch apart, which is fine. It's just to roughly hold it together. I decided I did not want to baste it on my machine because I am concerned that I might stretch something out of shape if I did at this point. And to me, it's just easier to keep it uh, well controlled this way and honestly basting it with stitches this this long is not going to take very much time at all So I'm going to go ahead and go all the way around So this is just a very minor thing, but it's one of my favorite parts when I'm underlining is When you hand stitch you come all the way just about to the edge then come back up the other part and come down and what happens is you get kind of a little diagonally triangle out here, but then your stitches can continue this way. If I can do this, I'm looking at the camera. And so it just makes a much, much nicer corner. So that's how I recommend doing corners when I'm basting on for understitching. All right, so I've got these two underlining basted to the lining. And I am going to go ahead and take a step back and cut out all of my coat pieces from my velveteen. And I have ran this through my washing machine on hot and my dryer to try to get any coatings, any possible shrinkage, any whatever nasties out of this. So I think I'm going to go ahead and be ready to cut it. It's very, very important that I pay attention to the nap on this. So when I first get started, I'm going to choose which side is the top and always angle the top of my patterns in the same direction because they will totally look like two different colors uh, if I don't do that. So I'm going to go ahead, get some things on my table cleared off because this is a lot of heavy velveteen and start cutting out. But just understand, really, really important that all of the pattern pieces are face up the same direction. All right, so I have started to cut everything out and there's a couple things I wanted to point out. First of all, 
I am concerned that if I put a lot of stick pins, straight pins into this, that it's going to leave a mark. Um, just the pressure and everything of a pin. I think that there's a chance it could, you know, crush in some of that and everything and, and leave a mark. So let me tell you how I am handling this. So now you can see the top of it. I'm just going to put a couple weights on here to hold it in place on the outside. But I am, I'm not comfortable enough with weights just to call that good. So I am also getting out some scotch tape and I'm taping down my corners. And strangely enough, that can be tricky. So after I tape down the corners and I've got my weights on here, then I'm going to cut it out. And after I cut it out, I'm just going to clip the two pieces together with the pattern on top up in a seam allowance area with a couple of these little clips just to hold it all together so that it's not going to want to come apart. So that is how I am handling it, you know. Sometimes, sometimes it's necessary, sometimes it's not, but I would rather you know, err on the side of caution, then get all the way through and have little funky pen marks all over my fabric. But um, when it's really cold out, it's really nice to have, hold on. I have bugged myself. Ugh, that cat, that cat is a menace. Look at me, I'm dropping everything. Okay, I'll just hold this here. Let's say hi. Say bye-bye. Thank mm -hmm. you.